Back on Morning Line, this is Joshua Horn. He is taking your calls. He's a bearded man and a mustache. It's bushy and full, and it works in the winter especially, doesn't oh, yeah. it? Keeps the face oh, yeah. warm. <laughs> well, thanks for coming on from Social Security. The phone line's open, 737-7587. Let's go to Bob and see what Bob says. What's on your... Bob, what is on your mind today? I am curious. What's up, Bob? Well, uh, next September, I'll be 65. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering, do I have to wait till uh, like uh, March or uh, May or March, something like that, to go to Social Security, and or should I wait till I'm 66? I've been on disability uh, right. for several years now, and I'm just wondering what to do. I'm okay, all right, yeah, and Bob's a regular caller. And okay, that's yeah. good. So he's on disability, and he's going to turn 65. Okay, we've talked about this before. I know things yeah. don't really change when nope. he reaches, right? He, he needs, you don't have to do anything at all. Uh, when you're drawing disability, uh, when you turn full retirement age, which for him would be which is probably for him is 66 in a couple of months, okay. maybe. Uh, but basically, it in the system, in our system, it changes from disability to retirement. But on your end, you don't even notice it. It's the same benefit amount. Um, you've probably already got Medicare based on the, your, your disability, and so there's just really not going to be any change. That's great. And so mm -hmm. it, he's not going to get any less. There wouldn't right. be a reason for him to get less, and he won't be probably getting any more. But it transitions naturally. He doesn't have to fill out any forms or anything like that. Nope, no, nothing. The only the only difference is you won't have any of those periodic medical reviews yeah. uh, coming your way like we have every so often. You won't have those anymore because because technically you'll you'll then be on retirement, be full retirement. Bob, good question. We usually get a question like that at least once a show, and mm -hmm. it's, it's a good one because you always wonder is there something I got to do. Mm -hmm. Let's go next to uh, Mike. Mike, good morning. Hi, Mike. Hey, how you doing? Good. What's on your mind? Well, sir, I retired in 2017 at 59, okay. and my Social Security statement that I received in 2018 had figures, and the one that I received this year for age 61, the 62 figure and the 70, the 62 and the full Social Security numbers were higher, but my 70 figure was lower. Hmm. I'm curious to know what that would, why that would be. Hmm. Well, I do know that the statements that you receive are estimates. Um, they, they kind of assume that you're going to keep working. They're not 100% accurate, um, and so they're, they're kind of a, just an, an estimate, basically. Um, I'm trying to think of why the 70 might be a little bit less. If you kept putting it off, I mean, at least, yeah. you would think it would not go down. It, it may not increase a lot, but why would it go down if he waits to take his money at 70 than if he took it at 66 or 60? Well, I mean, it wouldn't be. What he, I think what he's saying is, is the, 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 the one statement he received a couple years ago and then the last statement he received, that whatever that number is for 70 on both those statements, that for whatever reason, it's a little bit lower on the most recent statement. Oh. And, and that may be because... Uh, you know, it's a, probably a little more accurate the closer to your retirement age, uh, because if, you know if you get one at age four, if you get a if you go on there and get a benefit estimate at age 40, it's not going to be near as accurate as if you get one at age 61, 62. It's going to be a lot more accurate. So it may be um, that the closer to the retirement age you get, it's just becoming a little bit more accurate. And then of course the most accurate estimate that we can provide is when you're pretty much ready to retire. Or actually, I mean that that is your amount. Huh, does that make sense? Maybe they just recalibrated since you're not working. Maybe the original estimate was thinking, well, he's continuing to work and maybe adding to it. And then they determined you stopped at some point, and so maybe you're not getting as much as they thought you would get had you kept working. Does that make any sense? Well, the, the confusing part was yeah. the 62 and the full Social Security age uh, numbers actually went up. Mm -hmm. but the yeah, seven, right. Yeah. Went down. That was where I was confused. Okay, yeah, that's a good point. I don't get why that would yeah, happen. Yeah, I'm not, not exactly hmm. sure. I mean, it goes up a little bit uh, when you have those delayed retirement credits where you take, uh, where you wait up until age 70. I mean, every month that you wait past your full retirement age, it goes up by a little percentage point. Uh, every month that you wait. So if you retire at age 68 in six months, you know, it's one amount. Or if you wait till age 69 in three months, I mean, it's just going to be a little bit a little bit higher, a little bit higher up until at age 70. And I always like to tell folks, I mean, don't wait any past age 70 because that's it, you know. Uh, make sure you get in at age 70. So again, those are estimates, um, you know, ba trying to estimate based on your work and, and it kind of assumes you might still continue working. But again, if you're, you know, 61, now uh, it's probably going to be a little bit more accurate than more, the most recent um, 
statement. Hey, Mike, um, I'm just curious. So you were able to retire at 59. Uh, you, I guess you have a pension or you had savings. Is it, was that your plan? Yes, sir. Okay, and that's great. So what, what, when do you think you'll take your Social Security? Do you, have you decided yet? It's going to be 70. Okay, so you'll put, you, you're in a position where you can put it off as long. Obviously, you're healthy. You've got enough to live on right now, and why not just get put it off and get the max when you can, right? Correct. Absolutely. Good for you, man. Yeah, good, good for good. you. Well, um, uh, we wish you had a clear answer. I guess if he wanted, he could call and have someone review his <laughs> yeah, thing. Yeah, I mean, I, again, those are just estimates, so I don't have a real good answer just because, I mean, the, whatever <clears throat> calculations they use, it, again, it does get more accurate the closer to your retirement, the most accurate. I mean, you could call and talk to us, and we can pull, pull it up and explain a little bit more. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, and, of course, if you're trying to make – tough financial decisions. I understand you probably want the most accurate information yeah. you can. Again, you can you can go on to our website, socialsecurity.gov, and plug in your information, and it's going to give you a, a pretty accurate estimate, uh, again, depending on how close you are to that retirement age, uh, with our retirement estimator. And you can plug all kinds of figures in there. You can put different times, different uh, dates, different yeah. things like that. Did he that. say that it was sent to him, the numbers? Because, I mean, I, yeah, if he hasn't gone on and started a, a social, my social security, yeah. he should do it. And I think you can get the answer there by looking at it, maybe. They do really send you some paper. Down. They do send those papers out okay. when you get close to retirement age. It's not like it used to be where it was all, every five years or all the time no matter what age you were now it's you know closer to when you you know when you're over 60 basically uh, but you can go on anytime to socialsecurity.gov log into your account and get that information uh, and again it may be a little bit more accurate you can also have the opportunity to put in la what they call lag earnings so if you're still working this year you can put that information in there it's going to give you even more accurate uh, information that's awesome mm -hmm. and you know the contrast between him and Sammy who's older than him who called earlier mm -hmm. but he has some monies in retirement and, and is able to live on this. As we've said all along, Social Security is to assist you in retirement. If that's all you're living on, as we heard from Sammy, and some people, I understand, have no choice. Right. But it's going to be a tough go. That's not a lot of money. If you're counting on just living on Social Security and thinking, oh, I'll be fine when I retire, I have Social Security, wrong. If you don't have anything else, it's going to be a rough go. Let's go next to uh, Timothy. Timothy, good morning. Hey, Timothy. Hey. Hey, what's on your mind? Hi. Man, I got a couple of problems. Okay. First and, for, first and foremost, uh, I have, I got a child support thing that they taking child support out of my check weekly. They put a lien on my child support. Uh, I mean, on my bank account. And once I, I once I told them that uh, I pay it weekly, they took the lien off, but the bank took my money. Hmm. But I'm paying back child support, and I've never signed a DNA. I never took a DNA test. I never, I never signed a uh, birth certificate or nothing. And the child is 23 years old, got a great job. They travel all over the place. Mm -hmm. But I'm in this child support, and there's no verification that the child is even mine. Okay, but what does that have to do with Social Security? Well, Social Security, well, what I'm saying is if they draw on disability, if they draw on disability and they're taking child support from me, uh, how does that go like that? Well, will it, okay, will that impact his Social Security? Is that maybe well, what he's Well, that's between you and the child support office. I mean, the child support office tells us what to, you know, if we have to garnish uh, child support, I mean, they, they send us that information, and whatever they send us, okay. we have to do. So if he is, for instance, okay, so, and I don't know, we have to go to break, but let's say, I guess if he's of age where he's collecting Social Security, mm -hmm. and you are contacted by a state agency for child support saying, we need to garnish his Social Security check to send part of that money to his child, then that's something you do. As yeah. long as it's all legally spelled out by the court of law and them, then if he's getting uh, $1,000 a month Social Security, maybe 200 of that will set aside and be sent yep. there. Now, if, if you've done something that will compensate for that and clear it up, then you have to have documentation and maybe get with the child support agency. Mm -hmm. Now, at that point, you have to make sure that they get all the information to Social Security to stop garnishing it, but that's the way it works. Yeah, most of the time it, the computer systems talk to each other, and so you've got to yeah. get them to straighten out on their end. But I can see how that's tricky. And if the garnishment had started, that's probably because he wasn't making the payments straight up himself, and they had to do that. Garnishments usually are the, the last resort, mm -hmm. whether they're taking it from your tax return, Social Security, or grabbing it from your paycheck before you get paid. That's usually because the parent has not been paying mm -hmm. up front. Now, I'm not sure that situation is yours, but if you've cleared it up, 
Call them, work it out so you're not double dipping. We'll take a break. When we come back, Pat, Rose, Ronnie, and more. We'll get to your phone calls right after this. Storm 5 weather update. For weather on the go, download the Storm Shield app.